So first of all, uh, to start Claudina again, because Claudina I start as a conference, we needed some people who will cover the program and who will bring speakers to, to this conference. So we engaged Adam Smolnik, who started the whole conference in 2014. He was the first organizer. He was organizing the whole conference using his own family. So the whole family was engaged. His wife, his kids were engaged to do this conference. Actually, it, it was totally community conference, open to any cloud. He started this thing in 2014. We've met in 2015 and that's why we've decided let's do the conference, uh, cloud conference again. We are not the organizers. We haven't organized all those beautiful things in here you have. What we only did, we were deciding about the program. So if you have any feedback, if you don't like any sessions, you can write straight to me or to Adam and say anything about the program of the conference. So, but you know, to organize the cloud business track, I think this is one of the conferences in Poland which has the cloud business track, so, or, or cloud in business. I wasn't able to do this uh, by myself. So we've asked some uh, well-recognized people in Poland which are talking about the IT, which are talking with the businesses, and they understand how the cloud is changing the business of the companies in this country. So I've asked uh, Krzysztof Rydrychowicz and Bartosz Gurczyński, Krzysztof is with us, thank you for that, who are the uh, partners of CIO.net. Uh, this is the community of CIOs and CTOs all around Poland. They are talking with many of those executive people and they are trying to understand how the cloud is changing the way they perceive and build the companies. So that's why I've asked those two uh, distinctive persons to be with us and to help us to choose the best speakers for this, this track. We've also engaged people who have a hands-on experience with the cloud. That's why I've engaged Michał, uh, who is with us, who, was, who, who is the previous uh, IT director of Aviva, one of the first, if not the first company in Poland who actually migrated the production uh, system to the cloud. They've migrated the production system to AWS with his own hands. So uh, Michał has a lot of, a lot of uh, experience right now. He's the global DevOps Ops manager or something like this. <laughs> Working, working in an international company, uh, he has over 200 people and they are de delivering a, a worldwide solution based on Azure at this day. So Michal has a lot of hands-on labs experience, so if you would like to talk about hands-on, please talk with, with Michal. And we've engaged someone who is very important when it comes to non-technical stuff. If you do the cloud in a bank or in an uh, institution uh, or in an insurance institution, you need someone who understands the compliance and the law. That's why I have engaged Łukasz Węgrzyn, who is the partner of SSW Pragmatic Solutions. Uh, he will not be with us, but his counterpart, Szymon, will be delivering a session about the com compliance law when it comes to the cloud solutions uh, in companies. So those two four nice gentlemen helped me a lot to prepare the whole program of this track for you. But as I said, if you have any feedback, I'm the person to, <laughs> to come back to. Guys, Claudina was always a community conference. Nobody is doing any business on that conference. Uh, this conference is not uh, for any particular sponsor. We, uh, well, I mean, there, it's not for any particular cloud. We have many clouds in here, and we want to keep like this. So to have many clouds, many people from different parts of the IT to be engaged. That's why we need some sponsors to do this stuff for you, because otherwise it will not happen. So we have Synetic who decided to be the sponsor of this track, and he will, uh, and the uh, representative of Synetic will give you a, a quick uh, presentation about the company. But we also, uh, you know, to do this kind of conference in Katowice, you need a sponsor who is the, uh, you know, a part of the city. That's why uh, the organizers engaged with city of Katowice, and I, right now I have a pleasure to present you a marketing film about your city. Have a look. Katowice is one of the fastest developing Polish cities, the capital of a voivodeship with almost 5 million people and the first metropolis in the country. Today's image of this young city, being just over 150 years old, is created by two faces, a traditional one with industrial heritage and a modern one, creative and economically strong. During a short period of time, Katowice experienced deep restructuring and, as a result, it is the services of the modern technologies industry that have become the dominant element of the economy. The decisions regarding the allocation of investment in this particular region have been taken so far by, among others, IBM, Capgemini, Mentor Graphics, Oracle and Kroll OnTrack, and the portfolio of investors is constantly expanding. 
The city is also well known due to its strong culture-related tradition. It is the place that the worldwide renowned composers Wojciech Kila and Henryk Mikołaj Gorecki come from. This is where multi-award winning festivals, the Off Festival, Toron Nova Musica and Rava Blues take place. The wealth of musical culture has been recognized by UNESCO, who granted Katowice the title of Creative City of Music. For some, it might be surprising that over 42% of the territory of Katowice is made up of green areas, partially constituting the remains of the former great Silesian forest. The inhabitants of the city look for rest and relaxation in the charming valleys of Park Kosciuszki or Dolina Czech Stavów, which particularly encourages active leisure pursuits, walking, cycling, rollerblading, and in the summer, kayaking. The real showcase of the city is the District of Culture, situated nearby the legendary Spodek. It is a great example of revitalization of the post-industrial areas. In the 1980s, coal was still being mined in this area. And today, one can find here the International Congress Center, which annually receives thousands of participants of the European Economic Congress. Or the final of the well-known, not only to the young generation, eSports tournament, Intel Extreme Masters the home of the Polish National Radio Symphony Orchestra, where the best musicians in the world perform concerts, and the new Silesian Museum, which stores its collection in the halls underground, have been built next to the International Congress Center. The Market Square in Katowice is a popular place for meetings. On sunny days, it is filled with people strolling, gladly passing time on the benches by the Flower Square, or under the palms by the artificial Rava River. The Market Square attracts people through numerous events, concerts, cyclical fairs, events intended for the young, and a skating rink in the winter. Katowice has created its modern image based on its cultural heritage. Visitors are invited to the historic district of Nikishovets, Gishovets, known as the Garden City, and the renovated zinc rolling mill in Shopienica. In the downtown area, we can find numerous 19th century middle-class tenement houses, as well as original modernistic buildings from the 1920s and 30s, including the real skyscraper built in 1934 as one of the first in this part of Europe. The proposals of the cities that, together with Katowice, form the first metropolis in Poland, as well as the offer of the other cities in the Silesian Voivodeship, constitute an interesting complement to Katowice's offer. The unique industrial monuments route particularly deserves attention, since it is the most popular in Poland and the most frequently awarded route promoting places connected with industrial heritage. Other tourist routes also enjoying great popularity are the ones in Jura krakowsko czestochowska in particular the Eagle's Nests Trail with castles and fortresses built on rocks, and lying around 80 kilometers from Katowice, the mountain region of Beskidi. Not far away from Katowice is Krakow, which holds a special place in Polish history as the former capital and the residence of Polish kings. It is worth using a bike to visit all the numerous attractions of the Voivodeship. The Silesia region is crisscrossed with a thick network of cycle lanes, eagerly used by enthusiasts of two wheels. Thanks to the rich heritage and numerous projects and investments both completed and current, Katowice has become the city people love to visit, not only during great events that take place in Spodek. And the attractions of the neighboring cities constitute yet another incentive for visits. Come and see for yourself. Visit us. Zapraszamy do Katowic.
I think this guy who was reading this text needs a hand, right, for reading all those Polish <laughs> names. <laughs> So, uh, thank you for that. Uh, actually, Miasto Katowice helped us a lot, helped the organizers a lot, so without them it wouldn't happen. But it also would, oh, excuse me, once again, it also wouldn't happen without uh, those three organizations as well. Group IT is the local organization who is trying to promote the region and is trying to promote the IT companies all around the Poland. And they are the official organizers of the whole Cloudina conference. Uh, Katowice, you know the city already right now, and MCK, this is the place where you guys are, and I hope you will enjoy it because it's very well prepared for this type of events, as we say. There are also two, uh, two partners who are from the very, very beginning and who are organizing this conference just for, you know, for fun, for the community, to build the community in Poland. So we have two companies, Murowisko, which I'm a part of, uh, and uh, Adam Smolnik, a part of Hostersi, who is helping this conference uh, a lot. Uh, we also have some partners, as I mentioned. We have the Hostershi, who are the Platinum partners. Uh, we have some other great companies like SAP Labs Poland, Accenture, Vim uh, in here. Lots of silver sponsors you will guys see. Uh, some of them are well known in Poland. We, we see some vendors, we see Microsoft, uh, we see Barracuda. Uh, we see some uh, services vendors like Predica or Billenium. So you, have, you see plenty of companies who are doing cloud projects not only in this country, but also abroad. So if you need to talk with those guys, they are in here, and you can come and talk with them. We also have some me media partners who helped us a lot as well. So we have Digital Excellence and CIO.net, uh, part of which is Krzysztof, of course. We have a cloud forum, which is quite well known, led by Jacek Frankowski, who should be with us in here. So we have pretty nice media partners as well, and a lot of community partners. And this is very important for me. This is not a conference or a part of a particular cloud. We have different communities gathered around. We have uh, Azure uh, user group in here. We have AWS. We have serverless group. We have cloud native group, uh, Śląska Grupa. So as you can see, plenty of different groups from different cities, uh, Cloud Data Center from Poznań, uh, Bydgosz uh, for Google Cloud. So as you can see, plenty of different community partners who are in here uh, to be with us and to promote this, this event, uh, as I said. Miasto uh, Katowice again, <laughs> and now we have a quick spot for the sponsor of this track. So I'm uh, adding the mic to you. Dzień dobry. Ja się nazywam Krystian Blaczek. Jestem Sanetik. Mam parę minut i zastanawiałem się, co mogę wam ciekawego powiedzieć, bo właściwie nikogo nie interesują historie firmy, prawda, biografie prezesów sponsorów, dlatego postanowiłem, że opowiem wam taką krótką historię z tego, czym się zajmujemy. Sanetic dwukrotnie już został partnerem roku Microsoft, jeżeli chodzi o sprzedaż rozwiązań chmurowych, więc coś, nieco na ten temat wiemy i mieliśmy kontakt z niejednym klientem i mamy, więc z tym wiążą się właśnie różne ciekawe historie. Chciałbym opowiedzieć dwie, taką jedną bardziej optymistyczną, jedną mniej. Dlaczego warto korzystać z pomocy różnych ekspertów, różnych firm, które mają już doświadczenie z chmurą. Nie mówię tylko o naszej, o naszej firmie, bo na zewnątrz macie stoisko tutaj wielu naprawdę wspaniałych firm, które mają też świetne doświadczenia, ale powiem dwa słowa o, o tym, co nas spotkało, czy raczej naszych klientów. Bardzo niedawny przypadek to odważne wejście w usługi Cognitive Services, kiedy jedna z naszych firm klientów, postanowiła zaimplementować, zaimplementować usługę tłumaczenia. No i niestety nie skonsultowali tego z nami, nawet nie próbowali, dosyć odważnie do tego podeszli na końcu przed dosyć nieciekawy rachunek z Microsoftu. To jest niestety jedna z tych historii, kiedy coś się po drodze nie udało. Niestety no, źle zinterpretowali dokumentację, tak? No, można było tego uniknąć, można było zaczerpnąć po prostu zwykłej porady, tak? Bezpłatnej wymiany doświadczeń. Niestety zaimplementowano tak tą usługę, że tłumaczono z angielskiego na angielski, z hiszpańskiego na hiszpański. Usługa się zapętliła i wygenerowała dosyć pokaźny rachunek. No i teraz gdzieś tam toczy się batalia. To jest taka smutniejsza historia, ale chciałem też powiedzieć tą bardziej wesołą, taką, w której jedna z firm, która chce całkowicie przejść do chmury, kiedy policzyła sobie koszty tego przejścia, no też rachunek ich oczywiście przeraził. Na pewno prawdopodobnie znacie te historie, kiedy mówimy, o sprawdźmy, ile to będzie kosztować w chmurze, tak? Otwieramy kalkulator, liczymy, zamykamy i wracamy do normalnego działania. Na szczęście udało nam się też dzięki naszemu właśnie doświadczeniu zlikwidować tą wysoką opłatę, obniżyć ją dzisiaj około 50%, tak? No, są takie możliwości, można zoptymalizować pewne rozwiązania, tak? Wydobrać inne maszyny wirtualne. Udało się, tak? Także 
takimi rzeczami zajmujemy się na co dzień, pomagamy klientom wejść do chmury. Ja tu wierzę, że większość z, z Was no, zna już dobrze dosyć tą chmurę, tak? Orientujecie się w tym technicznie, ale jest bardzo dużo firm jeszcze w Polsce z ekipą, która jeszcze do końca tego nie czuje, tak? I potrzebuje pomocy. Jeżeli tutaj są też takie osoby, to super, bo na pewno tą pomoc w ciągu całego dnia będą mogły uzyskać. Natomiast no, chciałem zostawić was z tymi właśnie dwiema historiami, żeby zastanowić się czasami, w którym miejscu się jest i nie wydepnąć właśnie w taką pierwszą historię. Mam nadzieję, że Senetic czy, czy może inne firmy, które tutaj są, pomogą wam, żeby w takiej sytuacji się nie znaleźć. Także życzę udanej konferencji. Będziecie mogli mnie spotkać o 15.30 na jednym z, tam z stędów, więc jeżeli ktoś ma ochotę, możemy sobie porozmawiać bardzo chętnie. Zapraszam, dziękuję. Dziękuję. Okay, uh, so thank you again uh, for that short presentation. Uh, guys, couple of things about the logistic. I know a lot of you get the bags. Probably no one has checked what you have in the bags. If you can, please do, because you have a couple of things there. You have the map. You have the map to find the coffee. You have the map to find the food. You have the map to find the partners. And if you are still lost, you'll probably some community people all around to help you with, uh, to find yourself in this place. And I also have a couple of uh, requests for you. This is a community conference. You are guys a community. Uh, if, you, if you understand, what, if, you, if you get what I mean about the community, we create the space in which we are and we will behave uh, in the way we would like to be treated by others. So please uh, behave well. We have the code of conduct for this conference. We also uh, would like to talk about the multi-cloud uh, solutions. We also would like to share good and bad stories, but we don't want to talk bad about the cloud vendors. We are, this is a technical conference. This is all about experience and all about of sharing this experience. Conference is not only about uh, sessions or, and only about you know, networking, but it's also about uh, heading to a specific expert. So this is the list of experts uh, which will be available for you. Uh, It should be on the left, if I'm not mistaken. There's the Ask the Experts area there. And here you have the list of companies or names which will be there in a specific time when you can come and talk about different clouds, different solutions. And please go do and check them because such stories as you shared, probably uh, they have even more stories to share with you. Good, bad, and you know, they have some ideas how to solve your problems. So as you can see, uh, some names, some companies there. Guys, we also have an after party. If you don't want to come back to the place where you live in, we have the after party, which is starting right after the conference. In, it's in the same building. Uh, we have some paid uh, uh, drinks, non-alcoholic drinks, of course. We have some food there. So if you would like to enjoy and spend some rest of the time there, please come. Guys, probably you are here because you know what to expect from the business agenda. But if you, if you, are, not if you are not sure, this is the agenda for this track. Uh, and let me give you give a brief understanding of what we have in here because I think we have a pleasure to have really nice speakers with us and really nice experienced people and I will just share a couple of notes about each of them just to give you the idea who they are and what they do and why you should stay in this track and be with us to, 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 to listen to them. So this is the overall agenda. As you can see, we start with keynote from Marek Lenz, the CIO of uh, Piqueo SA. Uh, he should be with us in, in a minute, or he's already with us. And Marek will tell us a couple of things in Polish about how he, uh, what he have learned about migrating banks uh, to the cloud. Marek is working right now as a CIO. He has a previous experience in different companies from the financial sector. And Marek is one of those CIOs who likes to, to, to sorry, uh, who likes to still learn the technology. I remember one day leaving his office and seeing the book AWS for Dummies on his desk. So this is the one of those CIOs who is still with the te close with the technology and he's still learning like a hell. So I really admire his, uh, his uh, motivation. So we have Marek to start about the regulatory sector. He's a CIO, so a, a great, great person to start this, 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 this track. Then we'll move on uh, to the, the leg legal topics. So we will have Szymon Czach. Uh, who is one of the attorneys in the SS, uh, a, uh, SSW uh, Pragmatic Solutions. Uh, great company, uh, available in the whole Europe, and he will uh, share with you what obstacles, what problems, what things you may face if you will try to migrate yourself to the cloud from the legal perspective and compliance perspective. Shimon is not taking care only about, is not talking about AWS, Azure, Google, but also is trying to figure out what to do with things like Salesforce, LinkedIn in the organization. 
So he has lots of experience, talk with him, uh, he's helping a lot of companies. So after those two high-level sessions, I think people who are trying to connect business with the technology, so cloud with business, uh, will need to gather some ideas about the technologies you have in the cloud. And who is better to, to give you a quick understanding of what technologies we have in the cloud than Tomek Onyszko. Tomek is the CTO, Chief Technology Officer and the co-owner of Predica. And he will speak in English. So if you are interested in a session in English, Tomek will, uh, will speak in English. And he will talk about you know, all those buzzwords we have. Serverless, containers, Kubernetes, of course, right? Because we build everything on Kubernetes right now. Even if we don't understand what Kubernetes is, it should be Kubernetes. He will talk about lambdas, functions, and what the consequences it will mean for you if you will try to use those technologies. 85 slides for 45 minutes. This is what Tomek will do. Uh, for you. So if you, if you think you know uh, some of those technologies but would like to see the consequences, please come to, to Tomek. Guys, we don't need this technology only to, to, you know, we don't need technology only to be satisfied with implementing nice technology in our companies, but we also need to bring the innovation to our businesses. And that's why we've invited, with the great help of Michal, we've invited Rafał Frontchak who is the Chief Digital Officer working for Aviva, who will share his story about the innovation, how they do that, how they learn, how they fail, how they succeed with Aviva. So, Michal, uh, so Rafał is working for one of those companies who is using cloud at the moment and is mig uh, migrated already their uh, production system to the cloud and Rafał will share how they do that and how to build the innovation on top of that. So not, not so much of technology, lots of about the innovation and the approach. And then we will have two guys. One who is the uh, creator and the owner and the founder of Hostershi. The second one who is the uh, Tomasz, who is the PM for Hostershi. And they will be talking about the uh, cost optimization. Hostershi are uh, quite a distinctive partner on the Polish market. They are well known and they will share their way of automation and optimization of the costs. And then we have something which is, which, which is very, very big, I would say, because we have Przemek Schuder. Przemek is the GM, general manager for AWS, for commercial marketing here in Poland. And Przemek will not talk about the technology either. Because what we think on the overall level, when you implement the cloud technology, when you move to the cloud, it's not about the technology, it's all about the change and about the culture and about lots of those changes you need to make in the way you operate in your environment. So Przemek will share their stories, what uh, challenges you may uh, face when you have to change the organization culture and you are implementing cloud. So Przemek will close the whole, whole event. So once again, so this is our, this is our layout, uh, lineup of, of, of talks. Uh, please mind the, the timelines. Uh, we'll try to keep to, you know, to those uh, hours and be, and be on time. Um, okay. It's not done. We are not done yet. Guys, a couple of things. So, uh, pr tell me, how many of you are working with cloud for more than a year? Just to give me an understanding, okay? Who is, uh, for whom this is the first conference around the cloud? Anyone? Okay. So, so we have a mixed, uh, mixed, mixed crowd, uh, as always. So for those who are working with the cloud, probably you've already discovered that the cloud is changing. When the cloud was founded, let's say, by the AWS and then the Microsoft started the same way, it was very, very different. I remember 2008, I remember 2005, the cloud was very, very different. Actually, it was very simple service. And in the 2008, you, it was even possible to know all the services you had in the cloud. Actually, it was even possible to understand the whole business model about the cloud because you had four services, maybe eight services. After 10 years, uh, it's absolutely, uh, I, I don't think anyone is able to understand all services in any of the vendors of those big vendors you guys have, because there are too many. If you take AWS, if you take Azure, it's over 120 uh, or 150. It depends how you count. You are not able to understand the business model because every service has their own business model. You, you cannot keep up with the changes those people are doing because we can estimate between 1,500 to 2,000 uh, changes, so 2,000 changes every single year those guys are doing for their, for their solution. So this is a pretty distinct change we see when it comes to the cloud. And I have a couple of 
let's say, high-level uh, things to share with you. So my, my perspective is that, uh, well, what we see is that the cloud is getting more and more robust, but it's also getting more and more mature. So it's an it's, 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 it's end enterprise solution um, in many ways. Um, so the solution which you can control, the solution which can be compliant with your regulations, the, co the solution which, is, which you can land on your, uh, in your business. What's also interesting is that the cloud is changing the way we do the business on-prem. If you will carefully look how cloud vendors are building their data centers, they are changing the way people are building hardware solutions, not only software solutions, but hardware solutions for their own solutions. And if you look how Dell is developing their uh, uh, hardware, how EMC, how other uh, you know, hardware vendors are developing their hardware, they are taking closer look to what cloud vendors are doing. We also can see, even in Poland, that people are trying to utilize multi-cloud strategy. It's not easy, it's not cheap, but uh, the, the, the benefits which can come from this strategy in many places are indis indispensable. For example, uh, in, even in Poland, Onet, Axel Springer, they are using Office 365, they are using AWS, they are using some services from Google. So, so multi-cloud strategy is coming to Poland for in those big uh, uh, places where people need different services from different vendors. We are also seeing a lot of, a lot of changes in the culture. Uh, we are working with Michał for a couple of customers uh, when Michał is responsible for changing the way IT is structured. So it's not about technology. It's, not, it's also about the, the uh, structure of your IT organization. What we also see, we also see that we don't have enough people who are trained enough uh, to, to transfer those, those orgs. And what we also see is that we, uh, that the, of course in the cloud you build things using different architecture principles, using different solutions, using different approach. And some may say, well, I'm doing the IT for 20 years. What cloud can bring different, what cloud, what, what's different in the cloud? Well, there are many things which are different in the cloud. And if you ha don't have this approach, you will probably fail. And last, but uh, not the, uh, and, and, last, and last thing is that the, from the perspective of the CIO, CTO, or whatever you call those guys who are des deciding about the strategy of the IT, building the strategy, preparing for the strategy, and laying down the strategy for your company is even more important than the, the whole technology, because without the strategy you will fail. And we've seen that many times. I've seen the companies in Poland who started their journey, and after two years they've decided to go back. Why? They didn't understand the model, they didn't understand the consequences, they didn't understand the costs regarding this, and they, they didn't prepare they, themselves from the, you know, from the um, technical perspective. So those are my, let's say, some, some points which I would like to share with you because this, uh, this thing is changing and we have to keep with that somehow. So that's why I, I would recommend you to, you know, to, have to prepare yourself for some kind of cloud uh, adoption strategies, to prepare yourself for some enterprise cloud environments, to prepare yourself to migrate the whole company and to build some strategies for your own. Those are some of the strategies uh, I have. Probably some other people have different ones. The key point in here from my side to you, if you decide to move the company, think about the strategy, then think about the, uh, about the rollout. And the last but not least, uh, the situation in Poland is changing. Probably many of you have heard that we have someone who is called national cloud operator, or as some people say, domestic cloud operator. So a company in Poland who is trying to build with different partners and with different public vendors an offer for the Polish market and to offer different services in different ways using those two big uh, those, uh, partners, technical partners, and using those uh, cloud, uh, cloud vendors. Right now they've signed a, a big uh, agreement with Google. Google will build uh, data centers in Poland. Some other cloud vendors are probably in the queue, but no one is trying to confirm those information, so we don't know for sure, but this is the official Chmura uh, Krajowa slide, so I can share that with you. This is what they are showing. And this will somehow change the market. We don't know how yet, because they will be ready with their uh, services probably in the next 6 to 12 months, but this will change the market in Poland for sure. Um, and um, uh, from my perspective, uh, there's also one more thing in here. Uh, probably we will not learn ourselves how to do these things if we will not try. So trying things, failing, learning from those mistakes, sharing those ideas with others, this is what we need to do as a community to help each other 
uh, to bring that to the Polish market. And before I will end, I would like to ask Krzysztof, who is with us, who is the partner of CIOnet, to share with you a couple of words how CIOs in Poland see this whole cloud movement in here. Dzień dobry Państwu, dzień dobry Wam. Nazywam się Krzysztof Frydrychowicz, mam, prowadzę od pięciu lat społeczność dyrektorów IT nazwaną CIOnet. To jest około 500 osób, które pełnią funkcje kierownicze w dużych i średniej wielkości firmach. Michał mi poprosił, żebym podzielił się z Wami perspektywą, jak mam przywilej rozmawiać z CIOs każdego dnia i że, prosił mnie Michał, żebym podzielił się z Wami tym, jak, jak, co z tych rozmów z CIOs wynika, jak oni postrzegają rozwój cloudu, jak my postrzegamy z ich przez, przez ich pryzmat rozwój cloudu. I ograniczę się do tak zwanego rynku enterprise, to jest przez enterprise rozumiemy 100-150 firm w Polsce, które, których brandy wszyscy znacie, to są firmy, które mają w swoich działach IT po kilkaset osób, może nie, nie, może nie powyżej tysiąca, bo taki film powyżej tysiąca jest raptem w Polsce pięć, tysiąca, powyżej tysiąca osób w IT, ale kilkaset osób w IT, czyli duże, duże organizacje. I Michał się zapytał mnie, jak ten rynek wygląda, co, ja, co, co, co my w Sionecie o tym myślimy. No i na pewno ten rynek nie wygląda tak dobrze, jak ta konferencja. Znaczy nie jest tak dynamiczny, nie jest tak prężny. Na pewno ma duży potencjał. Ta konferencja też ma olbrzymi potencjał, w związku z tym tu jest, ta, tu, jest ta, tu jest ta jedyna zbieżność. A w ogóle przy okazji to chciałem wam, wszystkim wam, którzy jesteście z Katowic, pogratulować naj, chyba największej i najbardziej imponującej metropolitalnej y, transformacji. To, co widzieliśmy na filmie, jest niesamowite. Dzisiaj idąc z hotelu, jestem w Katowicach po raz może dziesiąty w życiu, ale po prostu byłem zachwycony tym miastem. Takie, na, przepraszam, na marginesie. E, a, propos, a propos transformacji cyfrowej i niecyfrowej. Więc ten rynek enterprise'u, cloudu enterprise'owego nie jest, nie jest tak bardzo obiecujący jak ta konferencja i ma to kilka powodów. Czyli te 100 firm, te 100 firm się jest bardzo, powiedziałbym, powściągliwe. Oczywiście są wspaniałe przykłady, jest Allegro, jest, jest przywołany przez Michała Onet, natomiast core enterprise'u zaspał. Tam się naprawdę niewiele, niewiele dzieje i są ku temu konkretne przyczyny. Pewnie znacie je doskonale, obawy, koszty, nieznajomość, regulacje i tak dalej. Natomiast myślę, że głównym powodem jest to, że jest cykl sprzedaży technologii do, do sektora enterprise. Od 30 lat tak się dzieje, jak przychodzi, przychodzi jakiś vendor do Polski, nieważne czy on sprzedaje software, hardware, usługi, to do kogo on chce adresować swój, komu on chce sprzedać. On w pierwszej kolejności idzie do dwóch sektorów. Idzie do sektora finansowego, albo idzie do, do sektora publicznego. Chce mieć dużego klienta, który pomoże mu osiąść tutaj, zbudować rynek. No tak się dzieje, że akurat te dwa sektory, i publiczny i finansowy, finansowy są mocno regulowane, w związku z tym wędorzy cloudowi nie mieli specjalnie pola do popisu na, ty, na tych rynkach. Nie było dobrych przykładów, nie było dobrych use case'ów, case studies i tak dalej, w związku z tym nie było na, od kogo się uczyć. Nie, skoro banki i instytucje publiczne nie korzystały z cloudu, no to tak naprawdę y, wędorzy musieli skierować swój, y, swój, swój, y, swoją uwagę na y, inne y, podmioty. W związku z tym roz, y, rozwój cloudu w Polsce był dużo bardziej demokratyczny i dzięki mniejszym firmom, startupom, y, reprezentowanym tu firmom technologicznym, tak się buduje ten rynek, od dołu. Nie jak w, jak w innych przypadkach. Ja myślę, że to się y, zmieni w nawiązaniu do slajdu, który pokazał Michał przed chwilą. Chmura krajowa, y, region Google, za chwilę myślę inne regiony y, y, dużych graczy chmurowych pojawią się w Polsce. To się zmieni y, również dlatego, że regula regulator będzie musiał być bardziej elastyczny, widząc, że ma dużych graczy w Polsce nad Wisłą nad Rawą czy nad inną rzeką w Polsce, będzie musiał zmienić swoje nastawienie, będzie musiał również zapobiegać takim sytuacjom, że w tej chwili najbardziej innowacyjne, nowo powstające instytucje finansowe, brzydko mówiąc, uciekają z Polski, bo mają do czynienia na innych rynkach zachodnioeuropejskich z mniej regulowaną sytuacją i, i tam zakłada, 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 zakładają działalność, więc to się na pewno zmieni. To jest kwestia pewnie kilkunastu miesięcy, ale fajnie jest widzieć takie przedsięwzięcie jak to, gdzie widzę mnóstwo młodych ludzi, nawet widziałem, wielu z Was podniosło rękę, że są po raz pierwszy na tej konferencji, to pokazuje tylko, że jest olbrzymi głód 
deficyt i głód wiedzy na temat cloudu, cloudu w Polsce, zarówno na tym poziomie startupowym, mniejszym, jak i, jak i w sektorze enterprise. Także yy, mam nadzieję, że za rok na tej konferencji, jeśli Michał będzie tak miły, zaprosi mnie do, do udziału, pozna, spotkam tu większą liczbę CIOs z enterprise'u, z którymi pracujemy na co dzień. Dziękuję bardzo. Dziękuję. Krzysztof, no to liczymy na ciebie, że ich zaprosisz. <laughs> <laughs> dziękuję. Uh, guys, so this is the official, uh, dziękuję jeszcze raz Krzysztof. Uh, guys, this is, was the official part of starting the whole conference. Now I'll switch into Polish. Uh, uh, thank you for attending this part.